Welcome back to LPC class. In today's video, we are going to look at an example of group frequency distribution table. So this is the question I read. The following are the mass obtained by 20 students in an examination. We have 60, 45, 72, 55, 42, and then other variables or mass as already indicated you can see here. So the question is, draw a simple group frequency distribution table we have to draw a simple group frequency distribution table right so how do you go by drawing this frequency distribution table for a group of data so first of all you can even start draw a simple group frequency distribution table for this you must first of all know your class limit or your class interval but that will help you to know the number of frequencies that will fall within a particular word class interval is that okay that's the class word limit in here so here since we are not giving any standard condition as to how to go by the number of class that we need to have the number of classes that we need to have for this group frequency this group data or this data of mass obtained by 20 students that's why you're going to go here you're going to choose your own number of classes and even the class interval you want to work with so here you select your class interval and then the class size or number of class size based on your own design how you think the data should be good that's how you group it so here you group your data based on your own design about how the data need to be grouped in one particular class and the number of classes that we need to have for this set of what data i believe that is clear all right so in that since I know the number of max here is 20 for the 20 students, this is what I would do. I'll first of all indicate or find the least mark in this score in this data. I know the least mark is what 35, right? And I know the highest mark is what 70 or 5. Is that okay? So once I'm able to get this, then I can decide that okay, fine. Then I want to start my class interval from say 30 towards. 30 to let's say 39 all right that is 39 and then 40 to 49 then it moves on, on and on and on in that case i believe that is clear all right so that's going to be my class for my that's what i prefer to use somebody might use say 31 to say 40 others might use 32 say 40 i mean i don't the day you're going to arrive at the same word results but then different what class interval and then number of classes so let's take note of that so that's what we are talking about okay so that is my own class limit i want to work with sure all right so let's have our frequency distribution table to be done based on this data so first you're going to have your class limit your class limit or your class interval the same thing so class limit your class limit your class limit is that okay and then you have your tally as always your tally as always and then you have in this case you're going to have your class boundary as well your class boundary is also part of the deal here class boundary and then lastly your frequency your frequency in this case all right so now let's see all right but here since we were told to draw a simple group frequency distribution table we can even ignore the class boundary and then focus on just the class limit the tally and then the frequency is that okay so when you get to more uh, complex one where you have other information coming in that's where you can even include the class boundary in that case so for now let's ignore the class boundary now let's focus on the class limit, the tally, and then the frequency. So now we know the least mark here is for 35, right? And then the highest mark is 75. And as I've already indicated earlier, or just some few minutes, I decided I want to go by what a class size or a class interval. I mean a class interval starting from what 30 to what 39, then you move on in order in that order so that is from 30 to 39 then it comes to 40 to 49 in that order so i'm going to have here to be 30 to 39 as my first class limit 
then move on to 40 to 49 and next going to what 50 to 59 the reason why i keep on having the class limit here because of what the highest mark is 75 so i need to capture a class limit that will capture what 75 as part of what the max in that case so you could to continue to 60 towards 69 and then 70 towards 79 so you realize that 70 70 70 79 we can have what 75 as part of what the frequency that will fall within this class is that okay so that is the deal here so once you get a class limit with the desired class in that each and every preparer of this good frequency switch table can come out with the next thing is you have your tally for each class limit i mean the frequency that will fall within this class limit is very important here so you ask yourself within 30 to 39 how many frequencies can fall within 30 to 39 from this set of group of data here we can clearly see that it is only 35 here that can fall within 30 toward 39 this 35 that can fall within 30 toward 39 so we can have, we can have what one stroke indicated and that will fetch us what our frequency to what one is that okay All right frequency to one then we come back to 40 to 49 let's see 40 to 49 we have 45 years part of it we have 42 years part of which is two we have and we come to the next row we have 48 which is three we have so i think that is also 45 42 and then 40 is our fetch as well three so we're gonna have three strokes one two three and then you come back to your frequency so three indicated here right then you come back to the next class is what 50 to 59 and we realize that 50 to 59 we have what the number of frequencies that can fall within that class so here too we can talk about 55 in the first what row we can talk about 55 here which is 1 54 which is 2 50 which is 3 and then 50 which is 4 and then 51 which is 5 52 which is 6 and then 58 which is what 7 so as usual you have your first five strokes one two three four and then the fifth stroke will i mean cross or yes kind of the first four and then have the two repeated which is what one two making it what seven we we'll have here to go at seven as frequency of what seven and then the next class limit is 6069 so ask yourself how many frequencies can fall within 6069 so 69 we have 60 here which is one here then we come back to 65 which is what two here and then 60 which is what three here and then we have 64 which is four here and we have 60 which is what five years so we're making it what five so let's take note of that so as a further indicator 6069 have what five strokes so it's going to be one two three four and then you have the last stroke crossing the first four strokes and then you record it as what five Is that okay and then 70 79 let's see so on the first row we have 72 which is one then come back to 74 which is two 70 which is three and then 75 which is what four so you can see that four strokes indicated here so one two three four and then have your frequency as four indicated here so at the end of the day you determine your total what frequency you tell me your total frequency so total frequency so total so total so i don't know the total should fetch you what one plus two should fetch me what four plus seven should fetch me eleven eleven plus five should fetch me sixteen sixteen plus one should fetch me what twenty so we can say that the total frequency should what twenty the frequency should be what twenty in that case so that is how we come back with or work on with what we call the class group simple group frequency distribution that is how we actually provide in the simplest form and here we were using our own class limit and coming out with a class number of classes in this case but one thing or one limitation about this system of grouping data is that here since when it comes to classification or grouping this data since we don't have any or there is no standard 
format as how we should group the data that will ensure uniformity so there's always what we call a variation because everyone or any student at or any prepare of this kind of table can use any class limit or can use any class limit at all and i know they're going to arrive at the same frequency of what 20 but then it wouldn't be the same because at the end of the day there's going to be what variations as to how the method that we use to arrive at what the class limit and even the tally and then even the frequency is going to go it's going to differ so that becomes a limitation when you use this method of grouping frequency i mean grouping data in a group frequency distribution form or preparing a group frequency distribution table when you're using this method where you select your own desired class limit for this data is that okay so that becomes what a limitation because at the end of the day there's going to be a variation because someone can use let's say 32 towards 40 and yes it's going to arrive at the frequency of what 20 is that okay somebody might use let's say 31 towards 40 and yes it's going to arrive at the frequency of what 20 so you realize that there is what differences or variations in how the method that we use to arrive at our total frequency of 20 which is the same results when we use different what class limit and that is what statisticians start down and then realize that oh then there should be a way that will help us to use the all of us to have a right method or have the same method to come out with the same result that we produce at the end of the day and as such they introduce a concept or a concept or a rule called what? Sturgis rule. What does this Sturgis rule state? This Sturgis rule actually help us to determine the number of classes that a particular set of data needs to have and even the class limit for that particular set of data. So Sturgis rule help us based on the variations in how we arrive at the total frequency using different class limits, which was a limitation in how this kind of data is built. That is when, that's where stat statisticians sat down or people in relation to mathematics sat down to come out with what a rule or a concept or stages or to rule will help us have a uniformity of how data or group frequency decision should be what be in a uniform form or in a uniform what manner. Is that okay? So that's the stages rule that they introduced. So in our next video, we are going to look at how to use stages rule to group a data in a group frequency distribution form. Thank you.